Hey everyone, April Dunham here. This video is all about search boxes for Power Apps. I'll take you through step by step how to create search boxes for your Power Apps galleries. But first, here's the intro. So here I have a power app that I'm building so that I can look for training and add training to my schedule. Now in this use case, I have a gallery that I've surfaced up here. And this just points to a SharePoint list that has different information about the trainings that I offer. So what I'd like to happen is, this is the home screen of my app. So I'd like to be able to log in here and not only see training that I've signed up for that I completed, but also find training that I could take. When I click that find training, it's going to take me to this screen where I have my gallery. Now, rather than scrolling through all of this and trying to find the, the classes that I want to take, I want to be able to search for this list because it's going to get fairly big and I want to be able to search based on topic, speaker, things like that. So let's walk through how to add in search functionality here. Now, the first piece of this is to add in the gallery that you're going to want to search on, which I've already done here. But now how do we implement the search functionality? First thing we're going to want to do is insert a text input control. So this is where we'll actually type in our search query and we'll use whatever we type in here to filter the results in the gallery. So I add in the text input and I'm just going to do a little bit of tweaking here to make it look how I want. Now first thing you're going to want to do is click on your text input and remove that default text because we want that to be empty by default. Now the next thing that I always do for all of my search boxes is I utilize this hint text property. And in here I'm going to type search for training. So you could keep it simple and just put in search or put in specifically what you're wanting them to search for. So that's going to have that help text so that the user knows that this is a search box. The next thing I'm going to do is just make this a little bit bigger and wider. And now I want to change the border. I don't want that blue. I want like a nice gray border here. So I'm just going to click on the border color and change that to gray. If you've looked at search boxes before on different sites, you notice that they all have that kind of magnifying glass icon. So that's pretty standard. So we're going to go here into icons and we'll insert this search icon. So I'm just going to drag that and kind of put it in the right hand side of the search box. And I'm going to change the color of this as well to be kind of a gray. So I'm going to click on the color property. Select one of these gray colors here. And then I will just kind of shrink the size down a bit by adjusting the width and height. And drag it back into proportion there. And another thing that you can do with this search icon, if you want the magnifying glass to be facing a different direction, if you click on the icon here, you can change the rotation. So you see there, I just changed the rotation to 90 degrees, so now it's facing the other way. So just another nice little touch that you can do. All right, so now if we play this, we see now we have a text box that we can type into that looks pretty nice. Now how do we make what we type in here filter the results in the gallery? All right, so before I show that, first I'm going to rename this search box so that we give it a relevant name. So I'm going to call this text box search input. And now if we click on our gallery here, I'll show you one way that we can filter this information. Um, so one of the ways that you can filter data in a gallery is with this filter function. So you type in filter, you point it to your data source, which in my case is this list called training. And now if we do a comma, we can do a logical test. So one of the things that we can do is we can use a the function starts with. Now this is going to ask you, okay, what text do you want to check? So you can take any column in your data source. So for example, maybe the title, because that's where the session name is stored here. And then do a comma. And then now you put in the text that you're going to search. So your search box text here. So we could just point this directly to our text box search input. And then do the dot to get its text value. Close out those parentheses there. All right, so that's this is the most basic way to do some searching here. So if we click play, we can click into our text box, and if I start typing, uh, creating, 
see that it's filtering as I type the results here. Sometimes though, you don't want that real time filtering or searching as you type. Sometimes you want a classic search experience where you would type in something like Power Apps, for example, press enter and have it do the search for you. So now let's take a look at how to do that kind of searching. If you want to search that way, we're going to need to utilize variables to be able to take whatever our text input is and output that to a variable to filter based off. Now, first thing we need to do if we want to do it that way is we got to click on our search box and change a few properties here. The first thing we want to change, we click on the properties pane, is this delay output setting. By default, this is set to false. What this means is each time that we type something in here, it's going to evaluate and get the keystroke that we just made, which is useful if you want to filter it how we just had it as we start typing, because it's going to evaluate each time we type and it's going to filter the results. But if we don't want that, if we want to just type something and press enter and then have it do that, we need to set that property to true so that it delays and waits until we're done typing to do anything. Now we need a way, now that we have that, we need a way to be able to get whatever we typed after we're done typing it. That's where a variable comes into play. If we click on the drop down for our text input box, you'll see a property for on change. So each time we change the value in this text box, we want to set that out to a variable that we'll use for filtering in our list here. So on the on change, I'm going to set a variable using the set command called search query. And I'll just set that to our text box search input dot text. And when you're working with variables, I always recommend going in and adding a label and setting it to your variable, the text property of that to your variable here. So search query, just to make sure that it's being filled out correctly. So I haven't updated the query yet for a gallery, but let's just test this out and make sure that that variable is being set. So if I type in power and enter, notice how it set our variable to power. So what I can do with this is on change will evaluate anytime I type something and press enter into that. Now the other way, we probably want to allow people to search with the enter, but also search if they click on that little magnifying glass. So we can use that same variable that we set here on the on change. So we can copy that and put that into the on select of our magnifying glass icon. So that now if I were to go in, type in something, and click the magnifying glass, it also sets that variable. All right, so we're going to update our items property and change this filter a bit so that it doesn't do that real-time search and waits for us to press enter there on the search. So what we can do is we can just change this starts with, and instead of pointing that directly to our text box search input, set that to our variable that we just created. So you see like we were removing what we just typed there and nothing's happening in our list right now. So if I were to come in here, type in intro and do an enter, now it filters all my items. It's not filtering it as I type. It waits for me to type in something to search for, either enter or click our magnifying glass, and then it filters our list accordingly. This is actually my preferred way of searching is having it be delayed on either pressing enter in the box or clicking an icon here and then filtering it. I, I think this way really helps performance and is a better experience in my opinion. Another thing that I like to do with the search boxes here, so say I type in a search, it's usually helpful to have an easy way to clear out your search. So instead of having to come in here and backspace and enter to kind of clear out your search, one thing that I'll do is I'll add another icon, which is this X icon, and I'll put it right where I have my magnifying glass and we'll just kind of make it match the colors and everything. And I'm just going to rename the icon so I know which one this is. And if we click on this new X icon, we can set its on select and we'll have it update that same variable. But instead of making the value, whatever we have in the text box, we'll just put two quotes right there so that it's an empty value. So this will essentially clear out our search. And then now all we need to do is we only want to show the X icon if we have something typed into our search box. Otherwise, we want to hide it. So we can click on the icon, go to its visible property, and we can say if the text box search input dot text, and we'll use the is blank function, which can evaluate if an object is blank. So if it is blank, then we want it to not show. So we'll set the visibility to false. But if it's not blank, we want to set it to true. So let's just run this and, and see how it works. So right now I have 
no value in there. So we just see our magnifying glass like we want. Now if I type something, you see the X is showing here. Uh, now we do have an issue where the magnifying glass is still showing. So what we need to do is go into that icon for the magnifying glass, go to its visible property, and do the opposite of what we just typed. So if that text box is blank, then we do want it to show. Otherwise, we want to hide that. So now if we play this again, you see our magnifying glass is hidden, but we see the X. And if I click that X, you can see that the variable was set back to empty. But you'll notice we still have a value in our search box. So we need to do one more thing. On the onSelect of that icon, after we set our variable, we'll do a semicolon, and then we are going to empty out the text box. So we can do that with the reset function. So we can reset our text box search input. So let's play this again, click our X. Now you can see the values emptied out. The X goes away since it's empty now and our magnifying glass shows. So let's just walk through again. Let's search. We'll search on power. So it's filtering our list. We can see the variable set correctly. We have our X we can click that empties everything out and all the results are showing again. That's really all there is to it, to adding in a search box. Um, there is obviously when you're doing this, you need to keep in mind delegation. So you'll notice the way that I was implementing the search in my gallery, I was using the filter and the starts with functions. And that's because these are delegable functions. So they'll work no matter how many records that you have in your data source. Another way that you could do this is with the search function. However, that is not delegable. So if you have more than 2000 items in your data source, it's not going to query all of your items and the search isn't going to work how you would expect it. I'm not going to go too deep into delegation in this video because this was just showing how to implement the search functionality. I will put a link to some delegation information in the video notes though, so that you can take a look at that and get familiar with delegation. That's all I have for this video. If you liked, please like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.